It's Carrie from Lovely Etc. And today I am excited to start a new furniture makeover. I am gonna show you guys how to reupholster armchairs. And I'm working on these chairs right here. I've had these for a while and obviously they are ready for a makeover. This fabric has got to go. So I bought these chairs as a set with a sofa and I've already reupholstered the sofa. So I feel very confident in showing you how to reupholster these chairs. If you're looking to reupholster some furniture, this style with wooden arms is definitely one of the easier ways to go because you don't have to deal with arms. But if you're looking to reupholster a different type of armchair that is more of a big cushy armchair with big arms, I do have a tutorial for that on my website, lovelyetcetera.com, and I will link that. So for my chairs, I am planning to first remove these oval details on the sides, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'm gonna paint the frame because I don't love this shade of wood. My two chairs actually have two different colors of wood for some reason, and there's no way I'm going to <laughs> strip and refinish all these curves. Um, and then I'm gonna reupholster with new fabric. I am all about trying new things and doing things the easiest way possible. So first I did try painting the upholstery because I know that's a big thing. And as you can see, I did a test patch here. The paint actually worked fine. I used DIY paint and it's only slightly, slightly crunchier and I didn't do any of the sanding or things you need to because this is the darkest possible color that I would wanna use. And as you can see, it just did not cover up all those flowers. So painting's not gonna work. I've gotta break out the fabric. And the first thing I need to do is get rid of this upholstery. When you're reupholstering a piece of furniture, removing the old fabric is actually one of the really key parts of the process. You can't just rip everything off because when you're removing this old fabric, it's gonna give you basically a roadmap to how to put the new fabric onto the chair. As you take each layer off of the chair, when you reupholster it, you're gonna put the new fabric on in the reverse order. So whatever you take off first is what you will put on last. And also this fabric is gonna serve as your pattern for cutting any new fabric to put on the chair. So before you start removing anything, just look things over really well. I like to take photos, especially of any somewhat complicated areas like up here around the top of the arm, there's a whole bunch of pieces of fabric meeting. I take photos of that. And then as I'm removing each piece, I label it so I know where it went on the chair and I can use that as an easy pattern. As far as taking the actual fabric off, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Most of the time, your fabric is going to be stapled on. So you can pry the staples out with a flathead screwdriver and then pull them out with needle-nose pliers, or you can use an upholstery staple remover. I highly recommend using one of those. They're 10 to $15 usually, and they make it much faster and easier and are so worth it. As you're removing things, you might also find, in addition to the staples, some parts of your fabric are attached with tacks, upholstery tacks, or there may be tack strips or all different things. Don't be intimidated. As you take it apart, you'll see each of those things and you'll know that's how you put it together. So you don't really have to figure out anything on your own. You're just undoing and then redoing. It's kind of like a puzzle. I've removed all of the old upholstery that has to be removed. You can see some of it's still here because these pieces I can just put the new upholstery right over top of. And now I'm ready to make some updates to the wood frame. The first thing is these ovals have got to go. I'm sure they are a great period feature, but I'm going for more of a classic look. So I'm cutting these off and then I am going to paint the frames of these chairs. I'm gonna do a paint technique that has the look of wood and I have another video that shows exactly how to do it if you wanna check that out. For my new fabric for my chairs, I'm doing something a little bit non-traditional. So I started looking at velvet fabric, and as I was looking, I came across some velvet curtains. And I realized that I could get a lot more fabric for a lot cheaper if I used curtain panels. So I bought these curtains from Amazon. It's a nice teal velvet, and it came in a pair that is, I believe, 108 inches long, so that is a lot of fabric. <laughs> Um, and it's so much cheaper than buying velvet yardage from a fabric store. And I'm excited because it looks beautiful. It was a little bit risky, of course, ordering something off of Amazon, but it looks beautiful, it feels pretty durable, so I feel confident giving this a try. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna start doing is laying out the pieces that I took off the chair earlier and cutting my fabric. When you're ready to start cutting your fabric, it's a little bit like figuring out a puzzle because you want to make sure that you waste as little fabric as possible, so you mostly want to lay 
and cut the biggest pieces and then fit smaller pieces in around it. But you also have to be careful because in my case and in a lot of other cases, there's some fabric that I didn't take off the chair because I didn't need to and why do extra work? And the back of the chair, for instance, is a really big piece. And also I haven't done the cushion jet. So I need to make sure I leave some big fabric for those parts. And in fact, I'm gonna cut some fabric for that back before I do anything else. Okay, so I've cut a piece of fabric for the back of my chair. And when you're cutting it, just make sure it's big enough because you are going to need to pull it through to the back and staple it. Like you can see, here's the old fabric. And the main tool that you need for this part is just a staple gun. And as you can see, it doesn't even need to be fancy. I have a newer staple gun than this, but somehow this old guy seems to get the job done the best. So I'm gonna start pulling my fabric through, um, pulling it through the sides, pushing it underneath until I have it in place. And as you're doing this, you may need to trim around some of the corners, which is fine. So now I can pull it through both ways evenly. Okay, the front's looking pretty smooth. I've cut all the corners so none of them are puckering and we're ready to start stapling. When you're stapling on your new upholstery, the absolute most important thing is that everything is pulled tight because if it's loose and saggy and baggy, that's what's gonna make it look really unprofessional and sloppy. So the way I like to do it is start with one staple at the top, one staple at the bottom, making sure it's nice and smooth and pulled taut in between, and then one on each side and then fill in from there. All right, then I check, it's looking good. And now I'll finish stapling all the way around. For this front section, it was originally sewn to the bottom here and I'm not gonna recreate that because instead I'm gonna use these upholstery pins, which are spirally pin, and they make doing this kind of reupholstery super easy. I stapled the bottom edge of my fabric and then made sure to pull it tight and just twisted the pins right in through the fabric into the seat of the chair. The most common way to attach fabric when you are doing a reupholstery project is simply to put it in place, pull it tight and staple it. Sometimes you'll be stapling behind the furniture or somewhere where the staples aren't gonna show, but other times like on these arms of my chair, you're stapling right along the edge of the furniture and the staples are in plain sight because there's just nowhere else for them to go. So for now, I am pulling the fabric tight so that it's nice and smooth and stapling as close to the edge as possible. And I'll be coming back later to cover up all of these staples with some trim so that the sides look nice and finished. Cardboard strips are another upholstery technique that you're likely to run into. You can just reuse the cardboard strips from your original upholstery if they're still in good shape. But if not, it's pretty simple to just cut some new ones from old cardboard boxes. The fabric is laid down first, upside down, and then a cardboard strip is stapled over it so the staples go right through the cardboard and the fabric. And then once you've stapled the entire strip into place, you can flip the fabric over the cardboard and it gives a really nice clean line. All right, just a couple of steps left. Next up is covering all of the exposed staples with trim. There's a couple of different types of trim that you can use. You can buy trim that is pre-made. A lot of times it's called GIMP and you just find one that complements your chair and attach it. But I decided to make my own trim. I made double welting cord using the same fabric that I used to reupholster my chairs. Double welting cord is probably the most professional kind of trim you could use. It's what was on my chairs previously and it just looks really good and gives a really nice professional finish. I'm working on a separate video about how to make your own double welting, but I wanna go ahead and show you how to attach it. Whatever kind of trim you're using, there are a couple of different ways to attach it. You can staple it on or you can glue it on. My chair originally had the double welting stapled on with the staples in the middle of the channel between the two rows of piping. But when I tried to do that, I just found I could not get the staples in 
deep enough where you couldn't see that glint of shiny staple. So I decided to use a different method that I've read about, which is using a good old hot glue gun. Um, you can also use a fabric glue called Liquid Stitch. I have to admit, I'm not always a huge hot glue gun fan, but in this case, it actually worked really well. I started out using the hot glue gun and then also adding a few staples here and there to just make sure it was really firmly attached. But eventually I just gave up on doing the staples altogether because I found the hot glue gun did a great job all on its own. You do have to be quick though and make sure you get the trim into place before the glue dries. The trim is done and now I'm ready to do the last part of the actual upholstery, which is reattaching the back and the bottom. The back of my chair and really most chairs and sofas were attached using tack strips on both sides of the fabric. And that's how I'm going to be attaching my new bag also. I saved these tack strips when I took off the old upholstery, but you can buy these on Amazon if you weren't able to save yours. And I also saved the fabric from the old upholstery to use as a pattern. And I'm just going to use this to attach my tack strips to the new fabric. Um, I'm going to line this right up and poke holes the same place as they were in the old fabric and then I will attach it to the chair. This is probably one of the more technical parts of upholstering a piece of furniture, but as long as you just take it slow and pay attention to what you're doing, it will turn out beautifully. The two tack strips along each side are gonna make a really nice, clean, crisp line along each side of the back of the chair. And to get a nice, clean line along the top, we're gonna use a cardboard strip like we talked about earlier. It's really important that you place your fabric correctly before you start stapling on the fabric or the cardboard. You wanna make sure that the fabric is centered so that each of the tack strips is going to fall right along the edge of the seat. Then once the top is attached, you can flip the fabric over and start attaching the tack strips down along the sides of your chair. Now I'm just using my regular old hammer, but you can get an upholstery hammer, which is a little bit gentler on your fabric and is a good idea, but a regular hammer will work in a pinch. You're just gonna gently hammer down along the sides of your chair, pulling tightly across the back and making sure that each of the tacks from your tack strips are firmly attached. Then when you get to the bottom, you can pull the fabric tight and staple it underneath and then staple the dust guard back up. I also sewed new cushions for both of my chairs, but I'm not gonna give a full tutorial for that because I am not nearly as confident in my sewing skills as my other upholstery skills, but there are lots of good tutorials out there. Just look for a video about how to sew a box cushion. And here are my finished chairs. I think they turned out great, and they are definitely a huge improvement over the yellow striped floral fabric that was on here before. Okay, let's talk time and money for a minute, because I think whether or not DIY projects are worth doing really comes down to three factors. How do the results look? How much money did it cost? And how much time did it take? If those three things aren't good, then it's not really worth doing. So in the case of these reupholstered chairs, I'd say, first of all, the results. I think they look beautiful. They look absolutely amazing compared to how they started out. So I feel really good about the result. Money. I bought these chairs off of Facebook Marketplace along with a matching sofa for $50 for the whole set. So I'm going to say the pair of chairs was $25. Bucks. The curtain fabric was $50. So all in all, it cost about $75 for me to get these lovely chairs. And I would say that's definitely worth it. I'm a big fan of buying used furniture. I love yard sales and thrift stores and I try to get things for a super cheap deal, but finding upholstered furniture that looks good and is inexpensive is way harder than finding like a nice wood dresser or some kind of wooden furniture. So in this case, I feel really good about spending $75 for a really nice pair of chairs. Now, obviously, if you don't have the tools that you need, you would have to spend a little bit more money but you really don't need any very expensive tools for a project like this. Obviously you won't find these exact same chairs for the exact same price, but I see upholstered furniture that has ugly fabric all the time listed on Facebook or at yard sales or thrift stores because most people don't know how to reupholster and they know it's really expensive to pay someone to do it. And so those things don't get snapped up. So if you feel confident taking on a reupholstery project, you're probably gonna find some really nice furniture really cheap to work on. Which brings us to the third factor, time. This was not a quick and easy project. <laughs> 
Reupholstering furniture takes a long time. I honestly couldn't even guess how many hours I spent on these chairs because I spread it out over several weeks, but it took a long time. Each step takes quite a few hours. So this is not like a super quick project. That's why it's so expensive to pay somebody to reupholster your furniture. It does take time. However, for me, I think it was still worth it because the results were so beautiful and it was such a great deal. And now I'm probably not gonna reupholster anything for the next few months because I need a break from these long labor intensive projects. I'm gonna try to whip out some small, satisfying, quick projects. If you haven't yet, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, Lovely Etc., where I share lots of inexpensive DIY ideas for creating a home that you love.